What I want to talk to you today about is the second model that we're actually going to be using. The model we're going to be using today, again, is not what an atom looks like, but it is a very practical, really good model that chemists like to use in order to help figure out how parts and pieces fit together. Okay, where they put those electrons and how the different elements are going to bond to each other. By using the method that we're going to go over today and even Bohr's model, um, it's like trying to figure out, it's like trying to put together Legos. You know, you put, try, if you had a set of Legos together, you know, you got the, the knobs, the buttons on one side, and you got the, the holes and the adapters on the other side. So there's only one way that Legos kind of go together. Okay, you can't put it buttons to buttons, you know, or bottom to bottom. It doesn't work. Same thing goes with chemistry. If you want to start bonding some of these elements together, making compounds like we're going to do, then we're going to need some sort of a model that's kind of like a picture of a Lego, so we know how to fix and sit them and stick them together and make compounds. So the next model that we are actually going to go over is called the Lewis dot structure. The Lewis dot and structure. Okay, the Lewis dot structure. Now what's important about the Lewis dot structure is, of course I don't know what Lewis was thinking when he did this, but I do know the results. So we're gonna kind of pretend. Lewis is here and he's going, you know, this is a great model. The only problem is every time two elements combine together, the only, the only electrons that are going to be playing around or being used during the chemical bond are not the ones on the inside rings, but the ones on the outside rings, okay? Only the ones on the outside ring. So to give you a really good example, let's go back and do Bohr's model real quick. And I know you know how to do this and you've already done this one, but we're going to do it really fast and let's do chlorine. That pen's not very good. <gasps> Try it when it draws nice and dark. There we go. Chlorine. And of course, we got to know the number of protons, neutrons, electrons. And if we look at our handy dandy periodic table, we have 17 protons. There's going to be 35 minus 17. It's going to be 18 neutrons. And negative electrons, we're going to start off with 17. So that's the important part right there. Electrons are what's going to be used during chemical reactions for the most part. Okay? So we're going to draw Bohr's model here real quick. We have our center nucleus. There's our first shell. I'm not going to take a lot of time with this because I know you've already seen this. You've got, remember, two electrons on the first shell. And by this point, of course, you're probably not numbering your electrons anymore because you kind of got the idea what's going on. There's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then you had to draw a third shell, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Okay? So there's Bohr's model for chlorine. Now, Lewis here is like, you know, we're trying to figure out how to make these chemicals bond together. And all of these electrons in the inside here, these eight right here and these two right here, we don't need to know about them. We don't need to keep diagramming all the time because they're not being used during the chemical reaction. The only ones being used during the chemical reaction are the ones in the outside, the most outside ring or energy shell. Now, they give a special name for those electrons. Any electron that's in the outside shell is called a valence electron. Okay? That's called a valence electron. I guess we should put electrons because we've got two, four, five, six, seven. There's seven valence electrons for chlorine. <clears throat> now, what Lewis was saying is that, you know, when this chlorine reacts with something, 17 electrons are not used during the reaction. Only the seven on the outside are used. And then the only thing is, is that if you didn't see this, okay, if you didn't see this part over here and all you were looking at this, 
you couldn't tell what element this was. You could count up all the electrons, but what happens if this is uh, argon and it's got a um, it's got an ionic charge on it, so it's lost or gained an electron, you know? So there's nothing really telling you exactly what element this is. So Lewis, the, his structure is very, very useful. He said, okay, instead of a drawing a nucleus in the center, he said, why don't we draw the chemical symbol, chlorine? So he puts a Cl right there. Now remember, when you draw a chemical symbol, the first letter has to be capital, the second one has to be lowercase. Okay, I don't mean a capital letter that's small, I mean it has to be lowercase, okay? So, instead of drawing a nucleus, now we're just gonna draw the CL. The next thing you do is, remember, Lewis is only wants to move these valence electrons onto this. Okay, so what he does is he goes, okay, so you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is what Lewis does. He goes, look, I got seven electrons. And we're gonna do the exact same way we did with the Bohr's model here, similar. We're not gonna draw a ring. We're gonna go one, two, three, four. Now I'll start pairing them up. Five, six, seven. So the Lewis dot structure for chlorine looks like this. Now for a chemist, this is really handy. It tells him exactly what element it is, and it tells him how many electrons he has to play around with in order to be able to try and form and figure out how these chemicals are gonna to stick together. He doesn't have to worry about all these other chemicals, or excuse me, all these other electrons in the center of the, of the model, okay? He doesn't have to keep on drawing those for no reason. So this is the Lewis dot structure. So key thing to write down in your notes, on the Lewis dot structure, the only thing Lewis is really interested in is, number one, the element symbol. Okay, for our example over there, chlorine. And the only other thing he's really interested in is just the balance electrons. Okay? Just the electrons in the outside shell, okay? So, now we can do this really, really simple and much quicker, okay? Now, I'm gonna stop the video right here. We're gonna to go to another video that we have to explain something new, okay? Because every time you wanna draw a Lewis dot structure, right now, we're drawing a Bohr's model first but there's actually something that you already figured out on that periodic table you filled out with all those Bohr's models on there. There's something new that we're going to add or that's actually already on your periodic table. So stay tuned or tune into the next video and I'll tell you exactly what those special numbers are.